Big it up YouTube, it's your boy Kurt Seven here for a video that I have been looking forward to but at the same time I've been dreading. Some predictions that I'm not so proud of but other predictions I'm pretty proud of. First things first, I just want to say uh, thanks to you guys, I am now an affiliate on Twitch. I can't thank you enough for the support. I've just got into streaming the last month or so and it's been fun and already I've become an affiliate. So thank you guys so much and if you're interested in uh, coming to hanging out with me, click the link in the description and come over there and uh, we'll have some fun together. But now lads, it's time to see where it all went wrong and where I made a few good decisions. Right, now before I talk about the league table and where every club finished, I wanna go over the individual awards. Now, I did my video of my predictions back in August, okay? Now, I'm gonna link that in the description below so you can go and see that. All right, now, first things first, I predicted that my player of the season would be none other than Kevin De Bruyne. So that's a tick for me. Now I know these individual awards haven't been officially announced, but I'm going to officially announce Kevin De Bruyne. I don't want to hear no Jordan Henderson talk here. He was fantastic for Liverpool. And I do agree, without Jordan Henderson, Liverpool aren't the same. They don't tick. But do not compare him to Kevin De Bruyne in the conversation about player of the season. I don't want to hear about it. Nobody came close to Kevin De Bruyne, in my, uh, my opinion. Especially coming off that injury uh, that he had the season before. But uh, it came true, so big tick to me. Happy day. Now, for the Golden Boot. I predicted none other than Jamie Vardy, two from two, happy days. That's looking at it now, you know, Jamie Vardy, yeah, yeah, it seems a pretty easy tip, but back in August, it wasn't so easy. Leicester weren't this good side that they actually were. I was actually banking on Leicester having a great season, and they did. Jamie Vardy, 32 years old at the time in August, gonna become 33 years old. Not many people were predicting that he would win the Golden Boot, but your boy did, so I'm very proud of that. It's a good start for these predictions. Now, hopefully it's not all downhill from here. <laughs> now, Young Player of the Year Award. Now, uh, this is definitely not official and I can't really say if it's right or wrong, but I did predict Marcus Rashford as the Young Player of the Year Award. Now, he did have a fantastic season, got 17 goals and was equal eighth in the Golden Boot Race. He had a fantastic season. Um, but he's in stiff competition with Trent uh, Alexander-Arnold, who could also win that. But I don't know yet, so I'll leave that as a question mark. Still to be announced. Now, manager of the season, I also predicted Pep Guardiola. Now, I got this completely wrong. Pep Guardiola should be in contention for the worst manager of the season, in my opinion. Now, with the squad he had and the results that came his way, it's pretty disgraceful. The league title was over by Christmas and City which is up and down, up and down. You wouldn't think they had a team that just literally broke the points record for the Premier League the season before. But I did also mention in my video, if you go and watch it, I did say, keep an eye out, I want to watch Brendan Rodgers. I said he is going to have a fantastic season and I was pretty right with that, with him bottling it. Um, right at the end, if this conversation was pre-lockdown, I think I would have been spot on the money there, but post lockdown, I don't think Brendan Rodgers came out after lockdown. I think he was still locked in. Right, here we go. Now, in 20th spot, which by far was my worst prediction of the whole season, which was Sheffield United. I predicted them to get 20th spot. Boy, was I way off. Oh my God, 11 spots. I wasn't even close. But to be fair to me, a lot of pre uh, people predicted Sheffield were going to go up and then come back straight down. We're going to get relegated. And uh, nobody predicted Sheffield were going to be competing for a Champions League spot. Let's be real. Before lockdown, they were fifth. They were above Man United. Look, after lockdown, they didn't come out so well. Uh, but they had a fantastic season. A fair play to Chris Wilder. Um, nobody predicted them ninth. Nobody. And... Pff, Mate, prove me wrong, show me someone that did. But uh, yeah, I was way off with that one. Plus 11 spots, not a good start, was it? Now in 19th spot, also going down, I predicted was Brighton. And I was wrong with that one as well. They actually ended up 15th. Uh, I wouldn't say comfortably uh, survived the relegation battle, but they got there in the end. They just nicked it. Fair play to them. Uh, didn't see that one coming. 
Now, in 18th spot, I predicted Norwich. Now, Norwich, they had a bit of hype coming up into the Premier League, but they actually finished dead bottom. They were proper shit. I did predict they were going to get relegated, but I was two spots off. Um, the Pookie party was definitely over <laughs> after November, and it was all downhill for Norwich. So, uh, unfortunately, they're not going to be in the Premier League next season, but uh, yeah, I was two spots off with the Norwich prediction. Now, in 17th spot, I predicted Southampton. Now, I thought they were going to survive in the Premier League, but it was going to be a rough ride for them. But I thought just by the skin of their teeth, they were going to survive. And to be fair to me, when they got smashed 9-0 by Leicester, I thought for sure these guys are going to get relegated. But no, but they actually finished 11th. They had a sick second half of the season. Fair play to Southampton. Danny Ings, great season. And that fair play to Southampton finished 11th, which for me... Uh, for Southampton, great turnaround, great turnaround. They would be wrapped with that finished, if you ask me. Now, in 16th spot, I predicted Newcastle United. Now, coming off the end of last season, all that stuff with them sacking uh, Rafa Benitez, uh, the club looked like a bit of turmoil. Right? The fans hated Mike Ashley and things weren't going too well. They were odds on to get relegated. A lot of people predicted Newcastle to get relegated, but... I just, something in my heart told me they're not going to get relegated and they're actually going to survive quite comfortably. But they did way better than that. So props to Steve Bruce. They finished 13th. I was three spots off having a much better season than I thought they uh, would have. Ultimately, they actually had a really, a decent season. They just fell away the last six, seven weeks of the Premier League season going back down to 13th. But I don't think many people predicted Newcastle to finish as high as they actually did. Now, in 15th spot, I predicted Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace ultimately finished in 14th spot, which I was one spot away. Now, I did that to five separate teams, which I was only one spot away, Crystal Palace being the first of them. Now, in 14th spot, I predicted Aston Villa, and ultimately, they survived on the last day through their skin and their teeth, thanks to Jackie Grealish. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, I was three spots off. I don't know why I predicted them to have such a good season. I know they made a lot of si signings, and I, in my prediction video, I actually said they're going to need time to gel. Uh, I just, I don't know why I thought they would gel a lot better and, and finish in such a high position, but ultimately... Uh, they survived, and I predicted that, but ultimately, I was three spots away. In 13th spot, I predicted Burnley. I thought they were actually going to have a good season uh, now that they weren't in the Europa League, and turns out they had an even better season than I thought. Uh, Burnley kept a lot of uh, clean sheets this season. Pope, for them, was an outstanding keeper. He was unreal, and he's a shout for England's number one goalkeeping spot, too. So, uh, fair play to Burnley. Uh, well done. Another shocking prediction. Bournemouth absolutely at a stinker. Jesus. Uh, I thought they were going to survive. I uh, thought it would have been quite comfortable. Uh, made a few good signings. Jordan Ibe, uh, Solanke. Uh, turns out they were proper rubbish. And um, this, this set me back six spots. Um, not one of my proudest predictions, but uh, it is what it is. In 11th spot, I predicted West Ham. Oh, another one uh, where I had a shocker. I had a proper shocker. They had a shocker, not me, them. They, well, we both had a shocker, really, let's be real. Fighting relegation, which I didn't really see coming. I should have. They're always in a relegation battle. They got David Moyes in at the end, and uh, to be fair play to him, fair play to Moyes, you survived. West Ham's up, but uh, to be fair, it was all down to millions of Antonio in the end, in my opinion. Um, scoring goals for fun uh, at the end. Um, but yeah, fair play to West Ham. Uh, you costed me five spots, but it is what it is. Uh, we move. Now, when you think predictions just couldn't get any worse, your boy just manages just to step it up a gear. In 10th spot, mid-table, I predicted Watford. <sighs> I know, I know, nine points off, wow, proper stinker. I thought with the sign of that guy, Danny Wilbeck, I thought they were going to be scoring goals for fun. Couldn't be further away from the truth. Relegated, which they almost survived, to be fair to them. 
Uh, they went on a bit of a run midway through the season, but they just fell away at the end. And unfortunately, Watford, uh, FA Cup final last season. This is why I thought they were going to actually uh, have a good season. They were going to kick on from them. Ultimately, they, they got spanked the FA Cup final. And they got spanked throughout the season, so it continued. Now, in ninth spot, I predicted Wolves. I, I actually said in my prediction video, I expect them to actually finish higher, but I thought Europa League was actually going to cost them. Now, you can look at this at two ways. I was way off, really two spots, but really, they were in around the, the fifth to seventh position throughout the whole season. But... After the pandemic threw everything off, uh, they didn't actually have Europa League to battle with their season. So they could have gone down a bit more, they could have gone higher a bit more. Um, but it is what it is. We, nobody predicted a pandemic. Um, but yeah, Wolverhampton in seventh spot, which they could be a little bit disappointed, I reckon, the way the season unfolded. Um, I think they were a like Champions League. But uh, in my opinion, they deserve to finish higher than 7th, but ultimately, I was two spots off. Now in 8th spot, I predicted Everton. Now Everton, yes, I was wrong, but Jesus lads, Everton, I'm just disappointed. You know, not even in the, the top half of the table. Normally, they're, t they're a team that's just fighting outside the top six, you know, trying to bake into that Europa League, Champions League spot. And I thought with Carlo and Charlotti, this is it now. They're going to have a good season, but no. Um, I was wrong. Four spots off. Disappointing. Now, in seventh spot, in my prediction video, I did say this is going to be controversial. And it was at the time. Chelsea to finish seventh is what I said. They snuck into the top four and finished fourth. I just thought with their new manager, Frank Lampard, no experience in the Premier League, despite doing well for Derby the season before, with their transfer ban, I just thought they weren't going to have enough just to make it. I thought it was going to be close in and out, uh, but I just thought the other teams around Chelsea were, were just going to thrive and do a little bit better. Um, but they proved me wrong. Fair play to Frankie, mate. Hold my hand in there, say I was wrong. Uh, you finish fourth, see you in the Champions League next season. Now in sixth spot, I predicted Leicester. But ultimately, looking back now at the season they had, I think Leicester had a decent season. It's their second highest finish ever in the Premier League, behind the season when they actually won the title. Uh, good season for Brendan Rodgers, good season for Jamie Vardy. Overall, good season for Leicester. Now in fifth, I predicted, which I got a lot of stick for at the start of the season. In fifth spot, I predicted Arsenal. I got a lot of stick because I predicted United were going to finish in the top four and not Arsenal. Um, what do you know? Arsenal finished eighth. They had a proper stinker. And let's be real, they were 10th they were before the final game of the season where they beat Watford. Uh, Uno Emery just wasn't good enough, and uh, yeah, sacked him and got Mikel Arteta, who galvanised the team a little bit towards the end of the season, and they're in, in an FA Cup final, so uh, yeah, three spots off with Arsenal. I don't think anyone would have predicted Arsenal to finish eighth. Uh, it's a lot lower than what people were predicting, in my opinion. Now, for the spots in the Champions League, the top four race, I predicted in fourth position... Controversial at that time, and I got a lot of stick for this, was Man United. You know what? You were right. I apologize. We finished third. Third. <laughs> but yeah, ultimately, it was a good season for United. Uh, we finished third behind Liverpool and City. You know, the best two teams over the last two seasons, and we finished behind them. So ultimately, it was a good season. When you consider that Rashford was out for two months, when you consider that Martial was injured for two months, Pogba was injured for majority of the season. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, a pretty good season for Oli and the boys. And I think for third spot, qualifying for Champions League, they'll be pumped with that. But yes, I was one spot off. Now in third spot, I predicted Tottenham. Now Tottenham at the time were fresh off a Champions League final uh, against Liverpool, which ultimately they lost, I thought for sure, under... Uh, Pochettino, they would kick on and they'd finish above United and again qualify for the Champions League. But no, he got sacked and then Jose Mourinho joined and then they were just, they were just, eh, meh. 
yeah, look, Tottenham, they'll be disappointed in sixth spot. But yeah, when you consider that they had a change of managers, uh, Son had to go to do army duty for how many months? And Harry Kane was injured for so long. I think they would take sixth spot. I think they would be happy for... I don't think they'll be happy that they're at the Champions League, but I think they'll be happy that um, they'll finish in sixth spot. It's a quite respectable where things were looking that they're going to finish around 10th or 9th spot. Things weren't looking uh, looking too good for Tottenham. But uh, yeah, Jose Mourinho getting things turned around a little bit towards the end there. But yeah, ultimately, what was I, three spots off? Right, now the top two. I predicted City to come first, and I predicted Liverpool to come second. So yeah, ultimately, I got that wrong. I was one spot off each of them. And let me talk about my logic, the way I was thinking. I thought Liverpool couldn't keep up with City because of their squad depth. I thought City's squad depth was so much better. Um, they were just going at an unbelievable rate of winning games after winning games after winning games. And I know Liverpool were too, but I just thought, like it wasn't Klopp or anything that I didn't think it was good enough. I just thought, City had such a bigger squad depth that if they were to get injured, they could carry through with those injuries and keep on winning. But I thought if Liverpool was to get some massive injuries, if Klopp was to lose Mane, or if Klopp was to lose, uh, get in, uh, if there was an injury to Salah or Van Dijk, I thought Liverpool would struggle to replace them and struggle to keep up the pace. And boy, oh boy, was I wrong. <clears throat> and that's the exact opposite what happened. City was the ones to get the injuries to Laporte and Aguero. And they were the ones that couldn't keep up to Klopp and, the, and them guys. So ultimately, I was one spot off each of them. And uh, yeah, fair play to Klopp, fair play to Liverpool, you are the champions. Right, so look, it wasn't the best considering how far away I was from my predictions, but when you calculate all the prediction points and where the teams actually stood in their final standings, I was 72 points away from being correct. Now, it is impossible to get zero, which means you got every single club in their exact position. Uh, 72 points, I'm not really proud of. I'm a little bit disappointed. Like Sheffield United absolutely stuffed me up, same as Watford. Uh, but there's no excuses there. They did it and fair play to them. Um, but you know what? This is my pre uh, first prediction video and my first reaction video to that. So looking forward to next season. I can't wait to beat this 72 score. So I'm looking forward to that. I wanna get that number down to under 60. I think I can do that. Also lads, do us a favor, get your comments down below. Tell me how you guys went with your predictions. I'm keen to know. Tell me what you did get and what you got absolutely bad. Uh, you know, all know with me, Kevin De Bruyne, player of the season, Jamie Vardy, goal the boot winner, spot on, happy days. But uh, yeah, Sheffield United, Watford, proper stinker. Uh, tell me how you think I went as well. Give us a rating out of 10. That's going to be interesting. I'll be keen to read your comments down below. But anyways, lads, I've been your boy, Curtis7. Do us a favor, hit that like button. It's muchly appreciated. Uh, yeah, don't forget to follow me on Twitch. Link is in the description. We'll play some FIFA, Formula One, whatever it goes. Anyways, I'm being your boy, Curtis7. Take care and put... Also, before I forget, uh, I've got a video coming out in the next couple of days talking about Fantasy Premier League. I finished in the top 3,000 out of 7.6 million players. So, uh, yeah, I've never finished so high before. Uh, stay tuned for that. I'm going to talk all about it, show you my team, talk about my tactics, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be good.